Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm creating a French country birdhouse pedestal using IOD moulds and fusion milk paint. I'm going to be using this little wooden birdhouse that I picked up from a craft website and also a candle stick that I had lying around the shop. We're going to combine the two of them. As this is not going to be a hanging birdhouse, I am going to remove the little rope that they had attached from the top. I've cut it, I'm then poking it through the little hole and getting out the excess rope through the hole in the front. My next step is to add a little bit of hot glue to my baubles mold. This is actually a Christmas mold. We're going to be using part of one of the bauble designs. So I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to the section where I want to stop my resin from continuing. Next, I'm going to mix up my resin. I'm using a fast cast resin. I'm pouring part A out into a container, part B out into another container, and then you combine them and stir for about 30 seconds. I'm then going to be pouring them into a few different molds that I'm going to be using today. I don't necessarily have to use resin for all of the molds for this birdhouse, but I wasn't sure exactly which molds were going to be glued directly onto the birdhouse and which needed that extra bit of stability to stand on their own. So I'm going to pour out all of my resin and it will take about 10 minutes to cure. Once my castings were ready, I started taking them out of the molds and I'm going to be having a bit of a play here. I know that I wanted to add some extra details to the front of the birdhouse. I would love to have some of the details sort of hanging over the edges. That's another reason why I used resin so that it would have that support. And here I've decided I'm going to place this little element from the swags mold into the little hole up the top. So to attach that, I'm going to be using hot glue Glue, but I'm also going to be using some Gorilla Super Glue. So together they're going to be enough to hold my little casting in place. The hot glue is also going to fill in a little bit of that gap too. After I'm finished gluing the piece into place, I'm going to carefully clean up any excess glue. Now I need to attach the sections to the front. These are from the Dainty Flourishes mold. I'm going to use some Gorilla Super Glue gel and I'm going to attach that to the front. This sets pretty quickly, so I'm just manipulating it into place. These are still pretty fresh, so I can bend them and manipulate them pretty easily. If you're working with your castings that have been set for a while, you can make them a bit more pliable by heating them up with a hairdryer or a heat gun. Next, I'm going to be attaching another element from the Dainty Flourishes mold to my birdhouse using that same super glue. I'm just going to position it up the top of the little hole in the front of the birdhouse. Next, I'm going to use a piece from the Classic Elements mold. I'm heating it up with my heat gun because it has cooled down since I've taken it out of the mold. So I've heated it up so that it's pliable again, and I'm going to bend and manipulate it into the shape that I want. I need to curve it around so that it will fit on the front of my birdhouse. I'm then going to use that same Gorilla Super Glue and also the hot glue so that it will be held in place straight away so that it will maintain the shape that I've manipulated it into. Now I could have cast these molds using clay as they're going directly onto a surface to support them, but I wasn't sure exactly what ones I wanted to use, so I just cast them all in resin. I'm also going to attach a, another piece from the Dainty Flourishes mold underneath the little entrance to the birdhouse. I felt like these just sort of tied well together. Next, I'm going to be trimming off a little bit of the piece that I made out of the baubles mold. I decided that I wanted to trim a bit off the top and sort of mold and shape the top of it into a more rounded uh, surface. So you can see I'm going to position it up the top and then I'm using a bit of sandpaper to actually round that resin a little bit. You can do this to get the shape that you want. I'm then going to use a combination of hot glue and also the super glue to attach that. Because this is hanging down, it doesn't have as much support, I want to give it extra glue to keep it in place. Next, I'm going to be mixing up some of Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint with the Sea Spray Texture Additive. 
I've added two spoons of the chocolate chalk mineral pain and I'm just going to slowly add the sea spray to the mixture until I'm happy with the consistency. Then I'm going to use a chip brush to dab and stipple the sea spray mixture onto my birdhouse. This is going to create some great texture that's going to go underneath our final coat of paint. I want this to have a vintage, rustic, worn feel and to create that look you need to think about the layers of your paint and how being outside might weather that paint. So I'm imagining that over time our top coat's worn away and some of that bottom coat the sea spray mixture is going to show through. It's definitely something that will add to that more authentic look if that's the look that you're going for. Once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to take a small little candle and I'm going to rub wax over the areas where I want to be able to distress back my paint. This is going to help make it so that when I'm distressing, it will just distress down to the brown sea spray mixture that we've put on there. I'm then going to be using Fusion's Hotel Robe Milk Paint. I'm going to be taking a cap full of the milk paint powder and putting that into a container. And then I'm going to take the same amount of water and add to the mixture. So you wanna do equal parts here. If you want your mixture to be a little bit thicker, you would do a little bit less water. I'm then going to stir this really well. I don't mind if my milk paint isn't mixed perfectly, but if you do mind, I would use an immersion blender. I'm now going to start adding my milk paint. I'm using a natural bristle brush to apply my milk paint and I'm putting it on very thick. I want this to be a one coat coverage because I don't want to disturb the wax that we've put on there. If you fuss over that too much, that wax is not going to do what we want it to do. So I'm going to put that milk paint over the top of the front section first. I'm going to be working in sections here because if you've watched me for a little while, you know that I like to speed up the drying process to achieve that wonderful cracking and chipping look and that's definitely going to go with our project today. Once I have the coverage that I want, I'm going to get my heat gun out and I'm going to speed up that drying process. I've got that paint on quite thick, so we're going to have quite a bit of texture. And in speeding up that drying process, I am going to get a few cracks and chips here and there, but ultimately the distressed look is going to come from when this is all dry and I come in with some sandpaper or I do a bit of wet distressing. So I'm going to move on to the roof now. And again, I'm going to do it in sections because I want to speed up that drying process. I don't want it to dry naturally because I'm less likely to get the cracks and the chipping that I want. As I'm painting, I'm not being super careful to get full coverage. I don't mind if there's some areas that my paint misses because again, this is going to add to that vintage look and it will also make it look like it's chipped paint, which is exactly what we're going for. So I don't need full coverage when I'm doing this. If you don't have milk paint, you could definitely still do this sort of a look. You can miss more of the paint like I have here and miss different sections so that your sea spray mixture shows through. Or you could use a crackle medium underneath whatever paint you're using instead. So just a reminder that you can find a full product list in the description of this video below, and you can find most of these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to come in with a wet wipe and I'm going to do a little bit of wet distressing. You can distress milk paint back with this because it can be reactivated with water. It's a gentler way to do your distressing. So I'm going to start off with this and you can see that I am rubbing over the top of the castings, paying particular attention to the details. I really want to bring those out and highlight those. So I'm going to work my way around and use that wet wipe to do some distressing. And then I'm going to be also grabbing some 220 grit sandpaper shortly. And I'm going to be using that to pay particular attention to the rest of the birdhouse because in doing that, I'm going to be able to bring out a lot of that texture. I'm going to be able to pull back some of that milk paint so that the chocolate paint shows through.
Now I need to work on the candlestick that's going to be the pedestal for our birdhouse to sit on. I'm going to be repeating the same steps that I did with the birdhouse. I'm applying that sea spray mixture to the entire candlestick. This is going to create that wonderful texture to give this more of a vintage look. Once my paint has completely dried, I'll come in with that candle again, hitting a lot of the edges and some of the other areas where I want my milk paint to be able to be distressed back. I'll then come in with that Hotel Robe Fusion Milk Paint again, and I'm applying it very heavily. And again, you can see that I am not being careful to get full coverage. I am happy for some of that chocolate sea spray mixture to show through. Once I have the coverage that I want, I will do exactly what I did before and use my heat gun to speed up that drying process. We're probably going to get some lovely cracks here because of how thick the paint went on. I'm then going to use a wet wipe to wipe off the excess paint from around the rim. I don't want anything going between our glue and the birdhouse. And I'm also going to lightly distress the candlestick for a vintage feel. Before I put my two pieces together, I'm going to seal both of the items with Dixie Belle's Best Stang Wax in clear. I'll then buff off the excess with a microfiber cloth. I'm not using any antiquing wax today. I don't want to dull that beautiful white that we have from the hotel robe milk paint. But if you want more of an antiqued look, you could definitely come in with a brown wax, maybe some Dixie dirt. I was just happy with this as it was. Now I need to attach my two pieces. So I'm going to be using that same Gorilla Super Glue again. I'm going to add a generous amount around the edge where I'm going to be sticking it to the birdhouse. And I'm also going to use some hot glue. This will be enough because my birdhouse is very light and this is just a decor piece. So once I have my glue there, I'm gonna turn the birdhouse upside down so that I can see where the center is and press down firmly. This is going to stick pretty quickly because I have that hot glue and my super glue it dries pretty quick too. Once my birdhouse is completely stuck down, I'm going to take that hotel robe milk paint and paint the bottom. You definitely want to do this because it's sitting up a bit high. You'll be able to see the base and it will feel like a more finished product. I'm also going to paint the bottom of the candlestick as well. And here's our finished French country birdhouse. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I've been wanting to do this project for a while and those IOD molds have really taken what was a very plain birdhouse into something that looks beautifully French country. Let me know in the comments what you think of today's project. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.